Hello, it's your boy from 1996. Welcome to another episode of Low Standards. Uh, interesting, not interesting, but um, we kind of got a new backdrop to work with as I decided to record my episodes for tonight in uh, the living room of the house since pretty much everyone is out of said house. We'll be playing Spyro, a hero's tale. A game that was basically okay, despite the fact that it's not developed by um, the original developers in Sonya Games. This was made during the time Universal was producing games that had the license to both Spyro and Crash, but could not use their um, the original uh, their, their, their original uh, developers to work on them anymore. Let me talk to you, I believe. Ah, Master Spyro. You must be setting out to stop Red from using the dark gems to take over the world. Yeah, something like that. Hey, who's Red? Ah, Red was once an elder like myself. I'd tell you the whole story, but I'm old and I take a really long time to tell the story. That's what everyone says. So, how about I just tell you how to destroy the Dark Gems instead? Whew, close one. Yeah, do that. To destroy Dark Gems, you should use your Horn Dive. Horn Dive. Alright, double jump, then press A, and, and then there we go. So this game is interesting to say the least. This takes place after all the other, um... After all the other Spyro games, in a sense, in this game you have to deal with uh, Red, an, an, an elder dragon who has betrayed the Council of Dragons, or at least all the other elders. Okay, what were you saying? And um, basically, you have to. F well, hold on. First, Hunter. Yo, Spyro, did you know you can use the double jump to glide further? So, double jump and glide already, buddy. If you find a dragon egg and get back here safely, I'll open the door. Why can't I just do that, Hunter? But yeah, this game is a bit of an improvement from the last game that came before, which is Enter the Dragonfly, which many of them, upon many people would say to be the worst games. But I do know a friend who likes this, that game. Uh, okay. Anyways, this game's pretty good. This is basically the equivalent of, uh, let's say... The same level of at least as good as the trilogy games like Crash Twin Sanity compared to like the first game they made that was not made by their main developer, or at least the first platformer made afterwards, which was of course Crash uh, uh, Wrath of Cortex. These games were both made, uh, this game was made, I, I think, particularly by Vindian. Oh, Vendi, uh, Vendi um, Universal, aka the same developer, uh, developers, well at least the publisher who helped made um, the Hidden Run game, along with, I think just most of the uh, games in the early 2000s. Along with that, um, this is also, I think this is mainly developed by Eurocom, which have developed a few of these kind of games before, like when it comes to Crash Bandicoot, uh, it was Crash Bash, but that was a party game, not a platformer. In this game, it's pretty simple. You have to destroy the Dark Gems, defeat Red and his army. He has enlisted all the Norks from the first game, and of course, Nasty Nork in the process. You basically go around destroying Dark Gems, collecting Light Gems, and uh, Dragon Eggs in order to basically free everything from all this chaos. Every enemy has a duplicate type. One will react to being, uh, to being charged at, and the other will be uh, reacting to how... Um, um, reacting to, oh, to fire only, in terms of defeating said enemies. So at least all the enemies have, um, the exact same, uh, behavior as the previous spiral games. Interestingly enough, gems in this game are actually currency you use to buy stuff. Yes, gems were like that in the previous games, but, um... With this one, gems are literally riddled literally everywhere, so there isn't no, there's no need for a gem counter anymore in, in terms of entering each area, because rather than a linear setup, this game takes it in a more, um, more open world setup. As in, like, you don't enter different levels, you instead continuously enter different worlds and keep going through everywhere. 
I think it's a Twin Sanity did too. We're just gonna play Twin Sanity, but I never owned a copy of that game in particular. Oh, never mind. In order to defeat many, uh, there's also enemies that only react to, um, who have metal who are gonna be defeated if you dive, charge into them once and then refire on them. Oh, I think only big enemies cannot be, uh, crushed. Dang it, I need to move my horn dive. There we go. There are certain things that are still within the game's like limits, but but basically the same thing as the game was in prior. Collecting gems to buy stuff, money bags, this money bags is a goddamn cheap steak. The cheap steak. Cheapskate! Hey, nice one, Spyro. You managed to find the dragon egg. Alright. Keep it safe. Somebody might be looking for that. Oh, now allow me to get the door. I can't tell if that's Jess Harnell or um or um or James Arnold Taylor. I think most of the characters are mostly voiced by James. They're also Tara Strong voices. What the new character in this game in particular blinks the uh, mole, who's the son of the professor. Along with that, most of the game's voice acting is mostly done by several like cartoon voice actors in general. Uh, here's a machine you can't use until you get the light uh, gem. Uh, that guy had no reaction, so yeah, at all. The death animation's a lot weird to look out upon. It's not like more comedic, like say the death animations in um in um the original Spyro games. There's gonna be a way to open this gate. Uh, sheep or father. Yeah. There are chests here that you can only unlock by getting a dragon key. Getting dragon keys are most likely either finding it outside in the wild or buying it from uh, money bags, which I believe is usually the case here. I think I gotta go here first before I can go to the gate. Spyro, this is activation man for my latest invention. The bomb catcher. Of course, to operate it, you need to collect eight power stars. Power stars? Never even heard of those. Oh well, uh, here's the game doing a lot of weird fourth wall jo jokes. I now get every reference. I know. I don't know. I can't. Fine. You need eight light gems. Anyway, off you go. I'll open the door to the nursery for you. Okay, there you go. You you, you have to uh talk to them in order to get this virus. Approach the pattern and the ball gadget will automatically activate. I don't think I'll be able to reach the ball gadget in time getting the light gems, but basically the ball gadget's like the ball mechanics from um from uh Crash Bandicoot 4 along with the um just playing Super Monkey Ball. Stop right there! Hey, what's going on here? It's those thieves again. They've just stolen the last of my dragon eggs. Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah, I found one of those. Maybe I can find all the dragon eggs for you. You know, I'm gonna be out saving the world anyway. Well, at my last count... Really? Like, well, I mean, Smiles always had this, like, level of sass to them, but I think they cranked it up more in this game because he's voiced by Jeff Hardnell instead of, uh, Carl, Carlos Oraziak or, um, or Tom Kenny. He just sounds really, like, nasally or naggy in terms of, like, his, um, his voice in this game in particular. But well, I stated before, Spyro, uh, apparently, not apparently, but, uh, all the thieves have once again stolen, the eight thieves are back again, as per usual, which will appear in every level now and then. There's money bags, you just have to do an attire, because why not? Here's the shop. Ah, there you are, my favorite wallet. My favorite wallet. Extra health unit, which will stand extra hits, opens gems. Teleport pass. You can use this to teleport to every single, any kind of pad in general. This is a instant upgrade, which will allow you to. I think it's just better to buy the multiplier, I guess, right now, so that, that way I don't have to like uh, just do this too forward. So allows you to carry up three lock picks. I guess in this area here is um. Some of these are uh, upgradable, uh, not upgrades, but uh, I don't want to say temporary, but um, shoot. Oh no, permanent upgrades, there we go. 
I definitely know the shockwave is a permanent upgrade. Hopefully this thing stays on, but we definitely need this uh, for more purchasable gems in the near future. Oh, you, unfortunately there's some jokes here I really like at the start of the level. Like, for instance, when uh, Zoe, um... No. I only need to talk to you. You're not a character. You're just a skin for a character. She was going to say that this dark gem should look pretty on my wedding ring. It's like, ugh. Not a fun joke. Apparently, this is like a character named Amber, which is just like a this is a uh, gender swap version of Spiral. You can get if you collect all the pink with flower eggs. I don't even watch that cutscene because that cutscene is just a cringer. Okay, so over here, this should be work perfectly with the gem of the multiplier since that will be um, since that has a lot of good gems in there. I wonder what happens if I talk to her after before I um, I allow her to destroy that dark gem. Hello. Don't take that bridge to the swamp spiral. If you do, I might never see you again. That's oh, terror strong. Yeah, well, I need to, but I'm gonna save the world for the third time, a uh, fourth time, or well, fifth time. I wish I could save fourth because I want to ignore the existence of friggin' of a uh, of a uh, ender dragonfly. But you know, this is before they decided to decant everything like they did with Crash uh, Four. It's about time. But I remember for the longest time, I used to scrim and save just for the shockwave. Because I thought actually the shockwave would be more effective, which it sort of is, but in all honesty, shockwave is not really that much of a life uh, purposing upgrade. It's just like, oh, you can make a bigger shockwave now. I missed the jump. <laughs> well, what are the screams, Spyro? You died. Oh yeah, but by the way, we're just gonna save and show you that you died, Spyro. Oh, great, we're going back in the cave again. Ugh. Oh, I gotta go all the way back now, great. Because I missed one jump. Oh, dang it, this multiplier only lasts... Ugh, I knew it. It's not a temporary upgrade, it's just a... It, it, it's not temporary, I mean, it, it's not permanent, it's temporary, I knew it. There was something fishy about it. And I think it was like almost 5,000 gems, I believe. No point. Wow, this place is really dark. Okay, I think I have to fly over here. Oh, wait, I have to stay on the damn platform. I was dumb. They even burn people in this game, like in Spyro 3. I probably should also try doing episodes on the uh, Reignited trilogy since I got that game at some point. Here we are at the swamp. These small little dark uh, gem shards aren't really you know, working that much. Yeah, uh, Red basically hired Nasty Norks' minions along with Nasty Norks. Well, not Nasty Norks' minions. All the uh, the the, uh, the Nork the Gnorks back. They say Norks in this one, but I'd rather go with Gnork because that's how they were spelled in the original game. Oh, I did not need to go to you. I think all these characters are uh, mostly voiced by hard now. It's doing a lot of work since, you know, at least he's not the face of Crash and Spyro these days in terms of certain voices. Clearly, the Crash, of course, being the current voice for Crash. Ever since, uh, I believe, um,. I would say, I was going to say, I was really just say between Sanders, like, oh no, I just, oh that guy got, <laughs> that guy had a funny dance when he got burned, but um, voice him and then Crash of the Titans in Mind of Mutant, which I believe is, well I like to say, the most annoying Crash ever, I don't know how he will find Crash, like, fine, if he sounds like gibberish, I know Crash is stupid, but honestly, does he have to be that stupid? what the f what just happened? That spire just just fired its webs at me, or just farted on me, and I died. Oh, that was embarrassing. Oh, let's go kill that spire. Okay, you can't still burn people because it's funny. No. Oh, wait, hold up, you have gems. Never mind, you're useless. Ah! <laughs> 
I can't get rid of this? Well, that's stupid. Wait, hold on, maybe my fire bomb. Okay, that's dumb. Ouch. Ah. What a weird way to die. Yeah, dragon egg. I'm gonna die in this spot. Oh. Ouch. That's not nice. Nice? I mean, that's not nice. As long as I avoid their pattern area, I think I should be fine. There we go. I think this is all for an A, which is definitely not the reason why I decided to lose my shit here. Especially losing sprites of all things. I don't want need these eggs. These eggs just mostly unlock extras. I don't think they're even fun extras, too. But now I should continuously destroy more dark uh, gems so we can at least progress in the game. Usually destroying dark gems are the more progression you will get, while the other two are for collectibles. Though light gems are useful, oh, that guy danced. Though light gems are more are more, are more useful for uh, dealing with um, obstacles. Uh, I like the burning, uh, the burning death animation better because they just spin. I need to talk to you. A supercharged gadget. What? Oh, dang it, my dang uh, switch dock. There we go. Just gonna take my switch out for now. You need 40 light gems. You need 40 bore asses. Oh! Does <laughs> this sound like maybe they really, really die? What the? They died quickly. <laughs> well, Sparks just abandoned ship. I can just go around this. I don't even need to. Oh. Well, I perished. Unlike most Spyro games, uh, this game doesn't actually have lives. You just, you know, go back to the nearest spawn point. Actually, now that I think, it, I think most Spyro games didn't do that except for the first game. Actually, now I'm thinking, I don't even remember. It's been so long since I played Old Spyro for a while. Last time I did it, it did in terms of the series, but specifically Spyro, um, Year of the, not Year of the, yeah, Year of the Dragon, not, not Year of the Dragon, Spyro 2 on the PS, uh, 3 with the PS1 disc. Oh yeah, I don't think I can properly run Spyro anymore, but then again, I, I think the PS2s that I have, the PS2 that I bought one day will might be able to run that game. These guys in their spinning animation makes me laugh. So there is a lot of these strong chests here, since I don't really see any fireworks, these are specifically here for that, um, for that supercharge, um, supercharge gadget, which I don't think I'll be able to do at all, because, you know, that'll take 40 light gems, and that's not gonna be, like, a lot for this episode. That's a, I mean, it's a lot for this episode, so I don't, I'm gonna do that. Oh, that's how I have a boomerang. You suck. I think you need to get that lockpick thing. I think that, that's a permanent upgrade. It's 5,000, uh, 5,000, 5,000, uh, gems. But that'll allow me to carry up the three lockpicks rather than just, uh, I think two. It's up two or one lockpick you can use sparks for. Most of the lock chests will either have something good like a dragon's egg or a, um, a light gem. There we go. Alright, now I can see what's inside there, which I don't know if I should be able, I really need to go in here. Well, this guy here, he's dead now. What? Okay, there we go. Oh, 
Oh, I can't use these things. So these things are like a little electric neuro, uh, devices you can only use after you gain a certain breath power, which is only available once you've defeated uh, a boss. One of the things this game tries to do in terms of new gimmicks you can use is that you can use different variety of elemental breaths if you collect the, um, if you collect the, um, whoa, what the fuck? where'd you come from? Well, I don't really need to go through you, but I'll go through you for the gems. Well, uh, at least I got the thing. I don't need to deal with you guys anymore. Well, after defeating a certain boss, you'll be able to, uh, collect this thing, uh, these gems, um, we need to uh, wait for them to die first so that way I can get my, get my gems. Well, if you defeat each boss, you'll get an elemental breath that is at least somewhat powerful to work with. I think certain enemies are weak against that. Um, weak against that breath power. They do have funny animations reacting to the breath, which is pretty funny. Like the Norks uh, shake, like like just shaking all over the place before they explode and die. They explode and die, but you know, like disappear and leave a trail of gems. This game is very underwhelming in terms of like it's it's a fun platformer. It's more sim it's even more simplistic than what Spyro already was. But still, it's, I still think it's fun. It is repetitive, is what I'm saying. I mean to say. Well, you're dead, sir. I'm gonna take your gems. Okay. Enemies have become basically freaking um, like thugs you beat up in River City. It is kill you. That was go barf. Don't freaking hit me. Right, apparently, um, there was a cut. Uh, I, I was able to say, oh fucking. And these guys are definitely gonna be uh, annoying, so I think I know how to deal with them. I just need to go find uh, an elder to find the technique to deal with them. Speaking of which, I can't go over there because I need another technique to find out. But, um, what was I gonna say? There's a cutscene for. Oh, hello there! Thanks for rescuing me, Spyro. My name's Blake. Blake the Mole. Blake the Mole. Blake the Mole. Yeah, what, what, what's with the attitude, kid? What? You think because I'm a mole, I must know every other mole in the world. Um, I'm just kidding you. The professor's my uncle. He built me this blood. Yeah, Blink is the new character for the roster. Along with Hunter, they also bring my Starch and Bird, but he's only available at certain levels. Like he was before, but it's more or less more of the arena levels that he was given in certain levels rather than an actual exploration like the animal buddies from the second from the third game. It's kind of weird. So, Dig a hole and do some exploring. But yeah, we might as well go ahead and try something new that isn't Spyro going around. So if I got any episode off like this, anyways. Anyways, Link's levels are going through the um, going through uh, levels in order to destroy stuff. However, people say this is probably the most tedious part of the whole game. It's because you have to keep doing this over and over again, and not to mention his, some of his levels are real slog and also annoying with the difficulty. But there's a cutscene where Zoe, when you beat Zoe for the first time, they give you your save point, which says, uh, it's like, here, every time you zap your head, your progress is safe. Also, you lose a million brain cells. Maybe ne neurons or something like that. And then she keeps shocking him to the point where Spyro is going to basically lose his uh, intelligence. I just thought it was twice again. Saying it out loud now, it's kind of annoying. Okay, so I can... Some walls can be dug. I think this is the wall I can dig for more stuff, or, or progression. I will leave with progression, alright. I have blink bombs, which I can use to... Alright. Oh, that's what the jars are for. The jars are basically uh, an extra life bar in case I lose my life. You can only save those for like too many dangerous like bosses or something. Alright. Okay, I see. So these explode out there uh, a long while. Oh, at least you can get rid of these things. Alright, so I can wall climb. Oh, what the fuck? There we go. Oh, 
God dang it, we have this freaking spawner. Do I get hurt when I hit my own bombs? Is there fall damage? Oh, there isn't. Well, that's good. Well, you hold the bomb before you go. I think I overshot it. There we go. There we go. Jesus, these guys are relentless. Well, you died. Oh, that's it? No. I don't need to do this. This is just for a dragon egg or a light gem. I don't even need those right now because who gives a shit? That's a 100% complete, uh, complete bullshit. Anyway, see you later. I'm now going to talk to you before... Yeah. We're gonna be on my way to get to the next area. All right, there we go. We got a new pathway to go to. Fire now. If I go through somewhere around here, you got to spend my year to review. All right, there we go. We got to destroy the dark gem and then allow me to enter through here. The strange dark gems will allow you to access a certain area. Let's get against the boss rooms. Fire you need to learn as much as you can to help you with your quest to find red. Oh, uh, and I just hard snout. Just hard, hard, hard smell. I can't words. Oh, such a story. How much time do you have, sweetheart? <laughs> red was part of the Order of Dragon Elders until his jealousy and hunger for power led him to try and overthrow our leader. I'm afraid of our leader. I have confidence, you know. But before you leave, I will teach you how to pole spin. Pole spin. Jump onto the pole to swing over to the next pole or dismount. Just jump. You can change direction on the pole simply by turning in the opposite direction. All right, now I can go ahead and climb poles. All right, I hear something at the top, so I'm assuming that if I go over there, I'll get my thing. I think after I get that thing, I can get it in the episode off here. Sorry, it's not super exciting since we're just going through the first few levels and I'm fighting a boss at the end. But this is how this kind of spiral game is in terms of its gameplay. The only game we ever got to was, um... Oh, I didn't want to talk to you! No, I don't need to... The, 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 <laughs> there we go. The music here is nice. Despite the fact that this is a fucking swamp, it makes no sense. Well, I'm about to buy something. My favorite one. Oh yeah, the one thing about buying from particularly the stand here is that there is a price. There's a price increase for everything. But I think this one allows you to have uh, extra health, but I don't know if it's only like a one-time thing. Because if it is, well, what's the fucking point? I know gems are everywhere, but seriously, give me some permanent upgrades that isn't the, the shock way for your horn dive. Alright, well, that's it for this episode. I'll see you all in the next one. I was going to originally do attack, but then I realized my save file was too far. I want to do a certain level, but, you know, complications. I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye! Come on, let me go ahead and hear it, see. Can we say it again? Spyro, you got money to spend. I'm here to relieve you. What a dumb line.